I created this video in under an hour using three of the most powerful, practical, and cost-effective tools for text-to-image, image-to-video, and text-to-music generation available today. More than that, the video you're watching features two characters that appear consistently in every scene. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I created a 3D animated story with two consistent characters. We'll go step by step, how to write an engaging script for this kind of animation, how to generate high quality images easily, and how to turn those images into a smooth, polished video. And like I said in a previous video, we can fully automate image generation. With ChatGPT's current limits, you can create up to 200 images per day per account. Yes, it only generates one at a time, but with automation, you don't have to wait. You can set it to run overnight and wake up to a full batch of visuals. As a senior software engineer, I'll personally code and provide you with the exact automation script, free of charge, so you don't have to use any paid tools. But of course, that's only for those of you who join the community. In this video, I'll walk you through how to generate everything manually. Before diving into the details, I'd like to say a few words. As a content creator, I'm honestly super excited and grateful for the overwhelming amount of positive feedback I've received on my recent tutorial videos. It's been a huge motivation to keep making more. At the same time, I've also seen comments like, this type of video is saturated now, or can this be monetized? And I'll be addressing those directly in this video too. Now let me be clear, these trending videos are just tools I use to pass on the skills I've learned, so you can learn them too. I will never tell you to just copy what I do. I always encourage you to analyze, think critically, and most importantly, add your own value to whatever content you're making. The examples and video titles I use are purely for teaching purposes, not benchmarks you should rely on to guess what will go viral. In every tutorial video, I want you to focus on learning the skill, not copying a trend. I know some of you already have experience, and you might still feel stuck, constantly looking for something to follow or trying to figure out why others are getting views while you're not. But here's the truth. None of that matters if you're not growing your skills with each video and treating this like a long-term journey. Think one year or more. There's no such thing as a niche that's not saturated. If you jump on a trend early, sure, maybe you'll get some views. But eventually, the trend fades. And if you haven't developed the right skills, you'll get stuck. That's the real issue. Consistency is everything. If you keep jumping from one idea to another, abandoning channels, creating new ones every few weeks, it's no surprise the algorithm flags you, and suddenly it's everyone else's fault. You blame the gurus, when in reality, you should be grateful for the free content and value they're putting out. Let's be real. Some of these so-called gurus haven't even made a single faceless video, yet they're selling courses on it. Why? Because they've chosen a different path to monetize their knowledge. And that's fine. It works for them. As for me, I use trending formats purely as a way to deliver value. And if you've asked me, why don't you share the prompts? Well, first of all, all the prompts I use are already in the videos themselves. I don't hide anything. I just choose not to paste them in the description because that can hurt video performance. Honestly, some of you don't even watch the full video or pause it to type out the prompts. You're rushing to get results, and that mindset will destroy your ability to learn and build anything meaningful. So don't do that. All right, I won't waste any more of your time. Let's dive straight into creating a high engagement script for our animated story. And the tool I'm using, of course, is still ChatGPT. You'll create a new thread in ChatGPT and enter the prompt, as shown on the screen. You'll want to adjust the prompt based on your specific needs. For me, I went with a style that feels playful and magical. Think little wizards with a whimsical vibe. Once that's set, go ahead and hit submit. After ChatGPT generates the story details, take a moment to review everything carefully. Make changes if anything feels off. In my case, I'm working with a runtime of about six to eight minutes. And here are the two main characters, Lumi, an eight-year-old girl, and Bran, a seven-year-old boy. All right, next I typed in this prompt. Create two prompts for generating images for both characters, in character concept art, neutral pose, with the style being 3D Pixar style. ChatGPT gave me two options. I quickly looked over both and decided to go with option one. Now, before moving forward, 
make sure the phrase 3D Pixar style is actually included in the prompt. That's important. Without it, the image quality might not turn out the way you expect. Once the prompts are ready, I copied each one and pasted them back into ChatGPT to generate the character visuals. Give it a moment to process, and then let's take a look at the results. The image for Bran, the boy, turned out almost perfect. As for Lumi, the girl, her magical book appeared a bit separated in the shot, but overall, the look and feel were spot on. One thing to note, if you don't mention an aspect ratio, ChatGPT will default to portrait mode. In my case, I wanted a landscape layout, so I simply added landscape image to the end of the prompt, and the output came out beautifully. Next, I tested the same prompt using Leonardo AI to compare results. The quality was solid. I always like to use both ChatGPT and Leonardo AI side by side to see which one delivers better results for the project I'm working on. I also tried using ultra quality settings, but honestly, I don't recommend it. It's so detailed that it actually ends up exposing a lot of small flaws in the image. Now, let's stick with ChatGPT for the script creation. I'll move on to writing the script for the story. I'll continue by using the following prompt to create a script for the story. For now, create a script for the story, about 100 words. Keep it short, but focus on the most dramatic part of the story, making it cinematic and engaging. You can review and edit this script of the story if needed. Next, I typed the following prompt. Using the script above, create 20 scenes with accompanying prompts that align perfectly with the script. The prompt should include full descriptions of both characters, Lumi and Bran, so I can maintain consistency in their portrayal across all the scenes. Let's check the result. We have two parts, character consistency, apply to all prompts, and 20 cinematic scene prompts. It's perfect, and this is exactly what I was expecting. Now, if you don't use ChatGPT but still want to create two consistent characters in a scene, you can copy the entire character consistency section provided by ChatGPT. Then, for each scene, simply add the prompt for that specific scene, and you're good to go. For example, I used the first prompt to create images in Leonardo AI, and as you can see, the images generated consistently feature both characters in every generation. With ChatGPT, all you need to do is copy the scene-specific prompt, and then upload the two images of the characters you created earlier into the thread. And boom, you'll have images generated by ChatGPT, and you'll notice that the faces of both characters are consistent with the images you provided. It's truly amazing. Next, I'll show you some additional images I created using the same steps. With these images, combined with voiceovers for the story script and video creation software to animate the images, you'll be able to create a lively and beautiful short film. Next, let's move on to the exciting part, animating these images into a full video. The tool I'm using for this is Kling AI. Recently, Kling AI launched version 2.0, but just a heads up, it costs 100 Kling coins for every 5 seconds of video, which is about 3 times more expensive than the previous version. Personally, I decided to stick with Kling AI 1.6 for now, but feel free to try 2.0 if you want to experiment. Using Kling AI is actually really simple. You just upload your image as the starting frame. For the prompt, I usually leave it blank, or just use something basic like create cinematic scene. But if you're working with simpler images and you don't give it enough direction, the video can turn out pretty static, like you're seeing here. That's why giving it a more detailed prompt makes a huge difference. In this case, I used the prompt. The boy draws his sword and holds it out in front, saying something with a grim expression. The camera zooms out slightly, revealing his entire body. You can see that it's much better compared to the previous video. I also have another example here, and you can see the improvements. For the first shot, it still felt a little stiff, so I added another prompt. The girl uses both hands to hold the book and looks down at it. When it came to the boy's movement, though, it still wasn't quite what I wanted, so I tried adjusting it again with, the boy walks over to the girl and shows a look of surprise, his gaze also directed toward the book. Even then, the animation didn't fully hit the mark. One thing to keep in mind, if you ask for too many complex movements, Kling AI sometimes struggles to follow the prompt perfectly. Still, even with that limitation, it's one of the best tools out there for turning images into dynamic video clips. Also, for scenes involving things like fire or smoke, Kling AI is surprisingly good. In fact, some of the clips you're seeing here didn't even use a prompt, and they turned out amazing. I didn't need to generate the animations multiple times to get usable shots either, which saved a lot of time. 
If you're interested, I actually have a full detailed tutorial on creating cinematic image to video animations with Kling AI. You can find the link down in the description. For the final video editing, I kept things super simple and used CapCut. Honestly, it's easy enough that I'm not going to walk through it here. I'm sure you'll have no trouble piecing the clips together. But of course, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you got a ton of value out of this video, and I'll see you in the next one.